there was a, a an experience that I had in when I was traveling to Papua New Guinea that I think really shaped the next chapter and the and and really the launching of Forest Trends. I had been traveling in Papua New Guinea for about a month and a half, and we were um, going to make a a large investment in Papua New Guinea, five million dollars, and which is a is a big number in those days for that country. And I had an opportunity to go meet the Minister of Environment, and I walked in and I said, really delighted, and have been really enjoy your beautiful country and we we on the part of the Mark MacArthur Foundation are going to make a five million dollar commitment to help conserve this beautiful country you have and I was thinking they were going to be popping champagne and but it was like no response practically and it was really uh, really confusing to me that that was it and I walked out of his office and the next two people that came in I think they were Malaysian they each had two full legal briefcases and I'm not exactly sure what was in those briefcases, but my mind went to this place that it was really clear. They were bringing cash in, and what they wanted to do was um, illegally uh, buy concessions to be able to cut the forest down, to be able to get the timber. And that really, that was that moment, and that really started to shape the, the future of the way I was uh, addressing these issues, and was really the seed of, of forest trends. You know, if you can change that financial quest, you know, equation of forests are less valuable than soybeans and make forests as valuable as we know they are, then we have changed that game. Then it becomes a kind of a, a systemic effect. That if we're going to win this battle, this war of saving our natural resources, saving our forests, we need to make them more valuable standing than if we cut them down or if we you know, transform them to oil palm plantations or soybean fields.